to our Sunday morning gentle class. We're starting on our back today. The monkeys here in the studio are already there. You can go there whenever you're ready. Take your first few moments to arrive. Let your focus come to your breath. You can be fully focused on your mat, your practice. You can be fully present to your mat, your practice. Once you feel like you've got that full focus on your breath, you add that element of control to your breath. Just breathe into your nose and out through your nose. Let your breath become longer, slower, deeper. One breath, one movement. Take a few more rounds here. Let that breath kick in. If it's not coming naturally to you or it's, it's not feeling right today, don't get too caught up in it, right? When you're doing this yoga class or any yoga class you take, just be aware of your breath. Know when you're inhaling. Know when you're exhaling. ready to start moving. Just take your knees, hug them in to your chest. All right, well, let's just do a little TDEs as total body extension, right? So you're laying here on your mat. Maybe you lift your head and shoulders up and really pull those knees in to make your tailbone lift up. Maybe keep it all more relaxed and let everything relax to the floor. It's up to you. And then from there, as you inhale, you can extend everything long, right? Hover your heels over the mat or just let them come to the mat and point your toes. Take your arms overhead, lengthen out. And then as you inhale, or as you exhale, bring it all back in. We're gonna do that twice more, right? Inhale, open everything up. Exhale, pull it in. Do it one more time. Open everything up. And then pull it back in. As you pull back in here, now just let your arms go out to the sides, that T position. 
we're gonna wake up. It's fine, just one simple twist each way. As you exhale, let your knees go to the right as you look to the left. Then as you inhale, pull them back up. As you exhale, take your knees to the left, look to the right. And you inhale, pull them back up. And from here, you're gonna take your hands to the crease of your knees. Just rock yourself up to a seated position, right? So we're gonna come in to easy sit, doesn't matter which leg is in front right now. Inhale, sweep your arms up to the sky. As you exhale, sweep your hands back behind you, right? Let your fingertips point towards your glutes. Lean back into your palms. Pull your shoulder blades together. Push that chest forward. You can stay right here. If you want to press into your palms and lift your hips up, pressing your knees towards the floor, you can do that. You don't have to. If you lifted your hips, let them come down. Bring your shoulders back over your hips. Sweep your hands back up to the sky. This time as you exhale, point your palms towards the front of the room and then drop your hands down in front of your shins. Just walk it out here, feeling that pull in the hips. Keep your hips on the ground. You don't want to let them lift up here. The further forward you walk your hands with your hips on the ground, the more you're going to feel that pull in your hips. Take two more breaths here. And then bring it back up. Now as we come back up here, switch out your legs. Bring your opposite leg in front, right? your awkward leg. We're just going to do that same little thing, those two poses, one more time with the awkward leg in front, right? So sweep your hands up to the sky. As you exhale, drop them behind you, fingertips point towards your glutes, lean back, pull your shoulder blades together, push your chest forward, take your chest and your gaze up. Right? If you want to lift your hips, lift your hips, you don't have to. And let your hips float back down. If you lifted them up, bring your shoulders back over your hips. Sweep your hands up to the sky, turn your palms towards the front of your mat, and then drop your hands down in front of your shins here, and walk it forward, right? Same thing, keep those glutes on the ground, walk your hands as far forward as you can. And your hips, your low back start to open up. And from here, we're gonna walk it back in. And then unwind your legs. Now, you're gonna bring your feet to the ground, right? Take them wide, slightly wider than your hips, kind of so your pinky toes are lined up with the outside edge of your mat. Sweep your hands back behind you again. It doesn't matter where your fingertips are pointed this time, they could be pointed out to the sides, or they could be pointed towards the back of the room, or you can just point them towards your glutes. Lean back into your palms, right? So the most of your weight's coming into your hands. And just let your knees swish from side to side, like a little ninja wiper action here. And then when you're ready, come to a stop here, right? And now you're gonna push yourself all the way up. We're gonna bring it around into a tabletop. So you come to that hands and knees pose with your shoulders over your wrists and your hips over your knees, your hands shoulder width distance apart, your knees hip width distance apart, right? Now what I want you to do here, right? Before we go in to anything else, just take your hands, flip them around so that your fingertips are pointed towards your knees and the eyes of your elbows are towards the front of the room. Right? See how that feels a little different. This is good for us, especially if you're spending a lot of time on your phone or on your computer, right? Open up the tendons in the wrist. Now, start doing a couple of cat cows just with your hands like this, right? You're gonna inhale, lift your chin, tuck your tailbone, let your belly drop. You're gonna exhale, tuck your chin, and round out. Feels a little different, just do it a couple times. Do one more, whatever you are. And let's come back to that tabletop. Now, you're gonna flip your hands back around so that your fingertips are pointed towards the front of the room. All right, but then take just your right hand, right? Lift it up, flip it over. So now, right, the back of your hand is on the ground, your fingertips are pointed towards your right knee. You can't do this on both hands at the same time, obviously hurt the wrists, right? But we're gonna do it on this hand, then we're gonna do it on the other hand. Take two more breaths here. All right, wrist. And then flip that hand over. <coughs> now we're gonna do it on the other side. Take that left hand, flip it over. Put your fingertips towards your left knee. Now, 
flip everything back over, come back into your tabletop. And this time, from our tabletop, now we're gonna tuck the toes under. Lift the hips up and back. Come in to your first down dog of the morning. Your fingers are spread wide now, like starfish. And your head back between your shoulders, push the belly towards your thighs, push the heels towards the mat. Okay. Add the movement if you want to, you can walk the dog, bring up one knee, push the mat, the heel towards the mat. You can sway your hips from side to side. Just take the time, check in with your body. Notice what's going on. What feels good, like you really push forward. What doesn't feel good, like you need to hold back. Make sure you're listening to your body as we go through the rest of our practice now. And when you're ready, settle back into that regular down dog. Bend your knees and look between your thumbs. Bring your feet towards your hands. Come to forward fold. Now, I want you to bring your feet slightly wide again, not super wide, but again, wide enough that your pinky toes are at the edges of your mat. And then let yourself sink into your forward fold here. Keep your hands on the ground or you can use a block if you want to. Right? All we're going to do here, you're going to push your left leg straight, bend into your right knee. So you're kind of leaning to the right and then push that right leg straight, bend into your left knee. So we're just going to go back and forth here a couple times. Swing side to side. Let your crown of your head come towards the ground. Right? Keep your belly on your thighs. So you're in a forward fold. You can put a little weight in your hands to keep your balance. All right, now keep your feet this wide, come back to center. Now you're just gonna plant your left hand on the mat, right? Bend into your left knee, so push your right leg straight, and then take your right hand up to the sky. Put your right palm towards the right wall, open that palm up towards the right. Now push your left leg straight, let that right hand come down, then we're gonna go the other way. Your right hand's gonna plant, your right knee is gonna bend. Push your left leg all the way straight, sweep that left hand up to the sky, Left palm towards the left wall. Now push your right leg straight, let that left hand sweep down, come back to forward fold here. Now keep your hands on the ground for a second, really feel your belly on your upper thighs. Bend your knees if you need that to happen, right? Because here's what we're going to do here. We're going to bend even deeper into the knees, send your hips back and down. You're just going to come up, lift your elbows onto your knees, and then lift your chest up as much as you can. Right? So you're propping yourself up. It's called camper's pose. And then from there, push your legs straight, let your hands go back down to the mat. Take a half lift, pull your shoulders even with your hips. Hands probably go a little lower on your shins because we've got this wider stance. Then let yourself fold back down. Here we inhale, we're going to swan dive ourselves all the way up to standing. So you still have that wide stance, okay, we're just going to keep it. Right? Grab your left wrist with your right hand, pull towards the right side of the room. Uh, back to center, switch it out. Grab your right wrist with your left hand, pull to the left side of the room. Uh, back to center here. Now drop into cactus arms, elbows even with the shoulders, palms towards the front of the room. Pull your shoulder blades together so your chest is opening, and then lean back, push your knees forward, take your chest and your gaze up. And come up tall, take your arms up overhead, and then as we exhale, we swan dive it back down into forward fold, right? So that's our whole sun salutation for today. A little different, we're gonna do it a couple more times through. Right here, we start by just planting that left hand, bending into the left knee, sweeping the right hand up to the sky as the right leg straightens. Push the left leg straight, let the right hand come down, then plant the right hand, bend into the right knee, lift the left hand up to the sky. Let that left hand come down, bring it straight. From here, right, you're gonna bend into your knees, send those hips back and down, bring your elbows to your knees to look up. And then straighten your legs, drop your hands to the mat, come back down. Take a half lift, pull your shoulders even with your hips, fold back down. Take your reverse swan dive, bring it all the way up. <coughs> Grab onto that left wrist to the right hand, pull to the right. Come back to center, pull to the left. Uh, back to center, drop into cactus arms, and then take your back bend. Inhale, stand up tall. Exhale, take it all the way back down. Forward fold. All right, let's do that one more time through. So we start by bending to the left knee, planting the left hand, sweep the right hand up to the sky. 
Let that right hand come down, push your left leg straight, bend into your right knee as your right hand plants, sweep the left hand up to the sky. Let that left hand come down, you're gonna have a forward fold. Start to bend into your knees, belly to thighs, slide your elbows up to your knees, and then press into your elbows, lift your chest. And then from there, straighten your legs, drop your hands back down to the mat. Take a half look here, shoulders in with the hips, and then fold back down. Now from here, we're gonna inhale, slide out it all the way up. Grab that left wrist, your right hand, pull to the right, come back to center, grab your right wrist with your left hand, pull to the left, come back to center, right, and then take your cactus arms, go into your back bend, and bring that tall, arms overhead, and then exhale. Now you toggle your feet in closer together. So your feet are just hip width apart, right? And then let yourself sink into that forward fold here, regular forward fold. Your belly to your thighs and the crown of your head towards the mat. Make sure you're shaking your head, yes and no. Make sure you're really letting that neck go. So take a half lift monkey here. Pull your shoulders in with your hips. And then as you exhale, let yourself fold back down. Now this time, as we inhale, you're going to bend your knees, send your hips back and down, pull your upper body up, right? You reach your hands forward or have them at heart center or have them up to the sky. Now we're just in our regular chair, right? You look down, you see your toes, you wiggle your toes, it's all back in your heels, and your hips are nice and far back, so your knees aren't covering your toes. Now, everybody's going to bring their hands to heart center. You guys have to do this in the studio. You all have them there already. It's good, right? Really press those palms together. Let those elbows go out to the sides. We're going to take a twist each way here. You're first going to bring your left elbow over towards your right knee. Maybe it just lands on top of the right knee. Maybe it hooks over the right knee. Maybe it's just hovering near the right knee. Okay? Make sure your thumbs are still at heart center. You've got that right elbow pointed up towards the ceiling so your chest is open towards the right wall. Inhale, come back to center here. Let's take that the other way. Bring your right elbow towards your left knee. Okay? Maybe it hooks, maybe it hovers, maybe it rests. Get that twist. Right knee bumps a little bit in front to the left. That's normal. It's keeping your pelvis in line. Don't over exaggerate that. Now bring it back to center here. Take a deep inhale. And this time, as you exhale, straighten your legs. Step your hands to the mat. Come back to forward fold. All right, now from our forward fold here. Keep your right foot forward. Take a big step back with your left foot. Now, as soon as we get here, right, we come into runner's lunge, you got your right knee over your right ankle, your left leg is nice and long. You're gonna bring both hands to the inside of your right foot, right? Drop your left heel, so your left toes point to the left, straighten your right leg, and then take that little yogi walk. Turn your right toes towards the left side of the room, let yourself come all the way down to this really wide-legged forward fold here. Take a half lift, pull your shoulders even with your hips. Maybe your fingertips dangle, maybe your fingertips are still on the ground. Then let yourself come back down. So come all the way back down. Now you're going to push away from the mat with both hands. Use your core strength. Draw it all the way up into a five-pointed star. Reach your fingertips up high. Lengthen out your spine. And then from there, just turn your right toes back towards the front of the room. Bend into your right knee. Take your arms long so you're in warrior two. Make sure that right knee is going towards the pinky toe side of your foot. Right hand's reaching right over the right knee, you're reaching right over the middle finger, on your right hand. Your torso's right over your hips, your shoulders are over your, hip, over your hips. Now flip that right palm up to the sky, scoop up with your right hand, let your left hand just trail along your left arm. Looking back over your left shoulder maybe, looking up at your right fingertips maybe, maybe you wrap your left hand around your back. Just bend more deeply into that right knee, reach a little bit further back with your right hand. All right, now from here, cartwheel your hands around. Come back into your runner's lunge. Turn your left toes forward. Now, you're gonna drop down here to your left knee, flatten your left foot. What I want you to do, step your right foot back so that you end up in tabletop. Okay. Now, both knees on the blanket if that's what you need. Now from here, we're gonna take our right leg, your right leg is going to reach 
way back behind you, toes towards the ground, trying to get that leg in its levels. Then your left hand's gonna reach forward, left palm towards the right side of the room, left thumb up to the sky. Bend into your left elbow, bend into your right knee, touch them together under your chest, tuck your chin to your chest as they touch, watch your arm touch, watching them touch, and then open back up. Now, from here, take your left hand down. Swing your right foot way out to the right, as far out as you can. And then from there, just wrap that right hand around your back. Take that step with your right foot to bring it next to your left hand. Unwrap your right hand, bring it down. So now you're in this kneeling runner's lunge. I ended up with my right, my left hip is almost in front of my left knee. I don't want that, I want my left hip, or I want my left knee back behind my left hip. So I'm gonna tuck my toes under, move that knee back a little bit. So now I'm in a true kneeling runner's lunge, all right? From here, you're gonna lift up, just come into that kneeling press, push your hands away from that. Keep pushing your right knee forward, reach high, maybe you lean back a little bit if that feels good. And then from there, let's come to half pyramid, just like we did yesterday, right? You're gonna push your right leg all the way straight, let your right toes lift up off the mat. Drop your hands on either side of the right leg. Hold over that right leg. Bring your nose toward the right knee. Squaring off your hips, right? Drawing that right hip forward as you push that left hip back. Now, bend back into your right knee. Bring it back into your kneeling runner's lunge. As you come here, now you're gonna plant your left hand on the mat. Take your right hand up to the sky. Left toes under. Now come up off your left knee. So we're just switching lunge. Your shoulders are stacked. Your chest is open towards the right side of the room. Now you're gonna let your left hand, or sorry, your right hand, come down inside your right foot. Walk it around again, just like we did before. Right? We're coming in to that wide forward fold, but you're gonna keep sweeping your right hand all the way over to your left ankle. Once your right hand's on your left ankle, or as close as you can get it to your left ankle, keeping your legs straight, right? Take your left hand up to the sky. Just a little kiss. Now let that left hand come down. Stay low, right? You're gonna yogi walk yourself all the way back around. Turn those right toes forward. Right? You can put a slight bend in your right knee. What you're gonna do here, you're gonna step forward with your left foot. You're gonna drop that left foot outside your right foot. So we're in this crisscross forward fold here. I'm gonna to turn towards the front so you can see. So I'm pinky toe to pinky toe here. My right leg on top of the left. Now, take a half lift, pull your shoulders even with your hips. Crown the head pointed forward. And then let yourself fold back down. Slightly to your right thigh. Now see if you can draw yourself all the way up to standing at a root to rise, right? So plant all four corners of both feet on the mat. You can swan dive or you can just let your hands trail up your body. See if you can bring it all the way up to standing. Take your arms up overhead. And then from there, you're just going to take your right foot and cross it, right? And we're just back in our regular standing mountain. As you exhale here, swan dive back down, come back to forward fold. Maybe take a half lift to monkey, just reset. And fold back down. Now this time as you inhale, we're gonna come up into that chair again. So you're gonna bend your knees, center it back and down, reach your hands forward or bring them toward center so you know we're gonna twist this time, right? It's our second time through with chair. Maybe you can sink just a little bit lower. Take a deep inhale here. As you exhale, bring that right elbow first towards your left knee. We're on the left side now, so we're twisting to the left side first. The same twist we did before. Up, maybe you can dig a little deeper this time. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, take it the other way. Inhale, come back to center. And then exhale, straighten your legs, drop your hands to the mat. Come back to forward fold. Now this time, you're going to keep your left foot forward. Take that big step back with your right foot. So come into runner's lunge. Left knee over the left ankle, right leg nice and long. Immediately here, we're going to bring both hands to the inside of the left foot. Drop your right heel, push your left leg straight, turn your left toes towards the right side of the room, and come back into that wide forward fold, facing in the other direction this time. 
And give yourself a breath here. Just really sink into it. Let the crown of your head be toward the ground. Now we're going to take that half lift here. Pull your shoulders even with your hips. Getting the crown of your head towards the front of the room. Then exhale, fold back down. Let the crown of your head come towards the mat. This time, as we inhale, you're going to push away from the mat with both hands. Use your core strength. Just draw yourself all the way up in five-pointed star. Reaching up high, making yourself as tall as you possibly can. Now, turn your left toes towards the front of the room. Bend into your left knee. Bring it all the way over your ankle. Take your arms long. So where to? Right? If you can see yourself in the mirror, if you could see yourself in the mirror, your right hand would be disappearing behind you, right? Your shoulders are that stacked up. You keep sending that left knee towards the pinky toes on the foot. Don't let it cave in towards your body. That's bad for your knee. Turn your left palm up to the sky here. Inhale. Scoop up with that left hand. Let your right hand just trail along your left thigh. If you want to wrap that right hand around your back, you can. Be looking over your right shoulder. Or you can be looking up at your left fingertips. But either way, bend more deeply into that left knee. Reach a little further back with those left fingertips. Create some more space. Now, cartwheel your hands around here. Are you going to land back in runner's lunge? Now turn your right toes forward. We're going to drop down to that right knee. Right? And then you're going to step your left foot back, coming in to a tabletop here. So step back into your tabletop. This time it's your left leg that extends long behind you. Toes towards the ground, leg at hip level. And then when that feels okay, you reach your right arm forward. Right palm towards the left wall, right thumb up to the sky. Bend into your right elbow, bend into your left knee, touch and down to your chest. Open all the way back up. Now keep your left foot up, drop your right hand. Right? Get into your hip here. Make a big, huge swing with that left foot. Right? Bring it as close to your right hand on the first swing. Or bring it as close to your left hand on the first swing as you can. Then move that left hand out of the way, wrap it behind your back, and step your left foot the rest of the way next to your right hand. So get that left knee over the left ankle, drop the left hand back down so it's outside your left foot. Maybe move back with that right knee so you're in that perfect kneeling runner's lunge. We're going to inhale, rise up into our kneeling crescent. Peel that upper body up, reach your hands up high. Keep your left knee over your left ankle, keep pushing forward with those hips. Maybe you lean back a little bit with that upper body if it feels good. And we're going to come from here into our half split or half period. So you push your left leg all the way straight, let your left toes flip up, dive forward, let your hands land on either side of your left leg. Drop your hips, draw that left hip forward, push that right hip back, let your belly come down over your left thigh. Just feel that deep stretch in your left hamstring. Now walk it back forward here, bend back into your left knee, bring your left knee over your left ankle. Plant that right hand on the inside of your left foot. Take your left hand up to the side. So we're here in our kneeling versus lunge. Now, we're going to tuck the right toes under, come up off your right knee, turn it into a regular twisted lunge. Right? And maybe it's here, you're going to let that left hand come down and come to the inside of your left foot. You're dropping that right heel, walking yourself around, turning those left toes towards the right side of the room, inside wide forward fold. We're just switching hands here, right? So you just keep walking your right hand all the way over until it comes to your Sorry, your left hand all the way over until it comes to your right ankle, and then you take the right hand up to the sky. Now let that right hand come down, and we're going to walk back around towards the front of the room, turn your left toes forward, lift off your right heel. Now from here, you're going to push with that right foot, you're going to step with that right foot, drop your right foot behind the left, so that your pinky toe to pinky toe here. It's your left your right foot swung around behind your left, and we're doing this crisscross forward fold. And so it's like a regular forward fold. You want your belly to be touching your left thigh. You're really lifting your left knee with the crown of your head toward the mat. We're going to take that half lift here at first. Just pull your shoulders up even with your hips. And exhale, let yourself fold back down. Now challenge your balance here. Really press all four corners of both feet into the mat. And take a big reverse swan dive, or just let your hands come up your thighs. Sorry to give that option last time. Right, you're just trying to get yourself all the way up to standing. And then once you're there, take that left foot, swing it around, and just come back into your regular extended mountain 
with the swan dive all the way back down and a forward fold. Now once we get here, forward fold, we're going to toggle our feet out wide to the edges of the mat, turn your heels in and your toes out, bend into your knees and drop your hips down into your Malasana squat. Right? You can use a block in your Malasana squat, sit down from the block, maybe that makes it better. Maybe you come down about an ankle, drop to your hips, bring the soles of your feet together and come here. Right? Maybe you just stay in your regular squat if that feels comfortable to you. Find your spot. Right? It doesn't have to be what I'm doing. It's what makes you feel comfortable. You want to get that hip opening. That's the physical portion of this. Physiologically, you're calming your body down. So start to reconnect with your breath here, whatever pose you're in. Notice if you still have control of your breath. Notice if you still have that focus on your breath. If not, reassert those things here. Slow your breaths again. Lengthen them again. Deepen them again. We'll take three more breaths here. the mat. Let's come here into a tabletop at first, right? And then we're going to set up for our core work. Right. So we're going to start by coming in to a forearm plank. So while you're still here in tabletop and everything's still feeling good, drop down to your forearms. Bring your right shoulder over your right elbow, your left shoulder over your left elbow, right? Your fingertips are pointed forward. You're making that little number 11 with your hand towards the top of your mat. And then from there, you're going to step it back, right? Your hips stay just below your shoulders. They're here. Now, if you want to drop down to your knees and be here, it's fine. Right? But your hips aren't over your knees. Right? Your hips are way in front of your knees. They're down on your knees. Right? Or you're here in this full forearm plank. Now, keep both of your hands on the ground. Drop your heels to the left. Let your right hip kind of flip up. Right? And then bring it back to center. If you're down on your knees, you're just letting those feet Kind of go over to the right instead of your heels. So letting your left hip flip up. Come back to center here. I just want you to do that two more times each way. Okay? So drop your heels to the left, lift your right hip, bring them back to center, drop your heels to the right, lift your left hip, come back to center. Do it one more time each way. To the right, to the left. Now this time, as you drop your heels to the left and you flip that right hip up, see if you can also Lift your right hand up to the side. If you need to draw down to your left knee, right? So it looks like this, and that's fine. Now, bring that right hand down, bring yourself back around into your full form plank, a modified form plank. Drop your heels to the right, or tilt your feet to the right, and see if you can lift that left arm up. Maybe you're dropping your right knee, just like this. Now, drop that left arm down, come back into your forearm plank. And then from there, let yourself come all the way down to your belly, right? Keep your forearms on the mat. Kind of push your belly up and through so you're in a little bit of a sink, sphinx pose here. Feel that pull in your low back. And then let yourself come all the way down, right? Let your forehead come to the mat. Sweep your hands back behind you so your shoulders are resting and your palms are face up right now, I'm turning my head towards the front of the room, towards the camera, just so I'm not talking to the floor, but your forehead should be on the mat. Now, you have two options here for this next one. You can bend into your knees, bring your heels towards your glutes, lift your head and shoulders up, and grab your same ankle with your same hand, coming into full bow. If bow's not something that's accessible to you, lift your head and shoulders up, reach your hands back, extend your arms long, and come to a locust that looks like this. Right, either way, we're getting the back bend. Take three more breaths here. Lifting your chest, chest higher. If you're in the bow, kicking those ankles into your palms. If you're in locust, keep reaching your fingertips back. One more breath. And then from there, release your ankles. Let your feet come down to the mat. As you sweep your hands around, bring your hands right by your chest, and then you're gonna push yourself all the way back here 
into child's pose, right? So push into your palms. Let your hips come over your heels. Go into your child's pose. Reach your arms out long. Let your forehead come to the mat. So we're just going to take four breaths here. From your child's pose here, right? You're gonna walk yourself forward. Let your arms straighten all the way. Let your elbows come up off the mat. And just keep walking forward so that your hips come over your knees, right? So I'm walking all the way forward. I'm back here, so I'm still on the camera. I'm walking all the way forward here. Then I'm gonna let my head come between my shoulder blades. Let my forehead rest on the mat. So my hips are up over my heels. My arms are super long. My elbows are up off the mat. So this is called melting heart, because your heart's melting towards the floor. Take three more breaths right here. And now press into your palms, lift your head slightly, right? But otherwise you're still where you were, right? You've got your hips over your knees, and then take that right hand, right, draw it back, and then turn your right fingertips towards the left side of the mat, and just slide that right arm underneath, and let yourself come all the way down, let your right shoulder come down to the ground, turn your head to the left, so you're looking underneath your left armpit. So it's almost like a thread the needle, but it's a little bit different, because it's like a child's pose of the needle, but you're still reaching forward with that left hand, right, feeling that stretch through your left armpit, through your left side body, and you're getting that stretch in your right shoulder. Two more breaths here. And then from there, press into your left palm, maybe press into your right palm a little bit so you can lift your head, unslide that right arm, reach it back forward. So now your right arm reaching all the way forward, your right palm pressing into the mat. So you can lift your left hand, draw it back towards you, Turn your left fingertips towards the right side of the room. Slide that left arm underneath your right armpit. Let your left shoulder come to the ground. Turn your head to the right. So you're looking underneath your right armpit. Getting a stretch on the other side. left arm down so that your left shoulder comes right over your left wrist and then draw that right arm back so we're back here in tabletop. Now as we come to tabletop here now we're going to go either into pigeon or veer. So you're going to slide your right knee forward towards your right wrist and then start to walk those right toes over towards the left edge of your mat. Now your right hips up off the mat right now if you're coming into full pigeon then what you're going to do here is tuck your left toes under, start to walk your left knee back, drop your left hip towards your right heel. Push up, and then you come maybe down to your forearms, maybe down to your chest and your head, maybe stay on your palms, right? All good options in pigeon. Now, pigeon is not for you, so you know that if it's true, right? You're going to let your right hip drop all the way to the ground. That's your open a little bit towards the left side of the room. Bend into your left knee, draw that left knee in against the sole of your right foot and then move yourself around so both hands are in front of your right shin in between your right ankle and your right knee and walk forward there you're still gonna get that stretch in your right hip so if you need to take the deer take the deer if you like full pigeon take your full pigeon
turn my gear around toward the front of the room just so we'll move on here. You guys can see what I'm doing. You stay right where you are right now. Four more breaths. Ready here, walk it all the way back up to your palms if you're not already. All right, now if you're in pigeon, right, pretend I was in pigeon, I was in full pigeon. Now, from here, I'm gonna let my right hip drop to the mat. So I'm leaning to the right, and I'm gonna bend my left knee, pull that left knee in against the sole of my left foot, I mean against the sole of my right foot. So we're all in a little deer position here with our right shin parallel to the front of the mat. We're gonna twist it out here. So you're gonna bring your hands now outside your right thigh. So now you want your hands in between your right knee and your right hip. Let your chest turn that way toward the right side of the room. And we're gonna walk it out here. Maybe your hands just walk a little bit in front of you. Most people can drop down to their forearms. Right? A lot of people can come all the way down to their chest and head. Right? So you find it for you here. If you're just up on your palms, that's okay. Right? The key here is the twist, and it's a little easier to go, on down, to go all the way down Right, when we're twisting, then we're trying to get past that hip like we're in full pigeon or deer. So it's possible, probable, that you can go a little further down here on the twisted version than you could in the other, in the hip opening version. And that's just how it is. If you're still up on your palms, it's fine. Let's take four more breaths here. When you're ready, come back up to your palms here. And then turn your chest back toward the front of the room, right? Press in to your hands. We're going to bring it back around into tabletop, right? So I like to press through my right hand, lift my right hip, and then I can swing it back around easily into my tabletop. All right, so we're going to try this going the other way, right? So now this time you're just going to draw that left knee up towards your left wrist. Start to walk those left toes across towards the right edge of your mat, right front edge of your mat. Tuck your right knee under, start to walk that right knee back. So you're dropping your right hip towards your left heel. Now in this version, right, if I'm in full pigeon, my left hip is still way up off the ground, maybe on my palms, maybe I'm down on my forearms, maybe I'm down to my chest and head. If you need the deer, remember the key here is you just lean to the left, let your left hip land on the ground, then bend into your right knee. Bring that right knee in against your left sole of your left foot. And then from there you bring your hands between your left knee, your left ankle, and you walk it forward just like you would in pigeon. Find your version of this pose. Maybe you're doing the same thing here. Maybe you did the pigeon on one side, you're doing deer here, vice versa. Maybe you're still doing pigeon in both places, but you just can't get quite as far on the left side, and that's okay, right? Our hips are never even. There's always one that we can go a little deeper on than the other. For most people, the left one is the tighter one, because we're right side dominant, right? We use our right hand for everything. It makes our opposite hip a little tighter. Maybe there's lots of reasons why you might have more space on your left hip. If you do have the extra space here, take it. Let's take four more breaths.
And then everybody's going to come to that deer position, right? So if you were in your pigeon, drop your left hip, lean way over to the left so that you can easily bend into that right knee and draw it against this whole left foot. Start to turn your torso towards your left thigh, right? It might not necessarily be exactly towards the left side of the room, but you want your hands in between your left knee and your left hip. Once you get there, walk it as far forward as you can. Maybe all you do is walk your hands a little bit forward. Maybe you can come down to your forearms. Maybe you can come down to the head of your chest. Feel rest here. To your palms. And then again, we're going to lean way over on or lean onto your left palm. So you can push that left leg up, lift that left hip, bring it around into your tabletop. Now, from our tabletop here, once you get all the way here, right, take your time. We're going to take it all the way down to our belly. We're going to do one more stretch here from the belly. So you're laying down all the way on your belly. All right. Now you're going to reach. Your right hand, or your, sorry, your left hand forward, right hand's right by your right chest. Push yourself over, roll over onto your left hip, right? So you can be here like I am. I've got my left arm extended. I'm resting my head on my left shoulder. If you want to, you can bring that left arm up, bring your shoulder over your elbow, and prop yourself up, right? Either way, it's fine. What we're gonna do here is stretch, try to stretch the right quad. So you're gonna bend into your right knee, bring your right heel towards your right glute, and then reach that right hand over so you can grab hold your right ankle and just pull that right knee in, or that right heel, I'm sorry, towards your glute. So your knees stay even with each other. Two more breaths. And then let that right leg go all the way along roll back on to your belly, right? I'm gonna flip around here so you guys can still see me, but all you guys need to do is roll onto your belly and then roll over onto your other hips. So now you're on your right hip. And again, you can extend your right leg long, or your right leg, your right arm long, and just lay down on your right shoulder, or you can prop up on your right elbow, whatever feels better to you. Left hand's right in front of you right now. You're gonna to start to bend into your left knee, bring that left heel towards the left glute, and then lift that left hand up. Just grab hold of your left ankle, Right, your knees stay stacked on top of each other, they stay even with each other. Just pulling that left heel in as much as you can towards your left glute. Release your right, or your, sorry, your left ankle here, right? Come back and then roll back over onto your belly. Now this time as we roll onto our belly, you're gonna bring your hands by your chest. Push yourself all the way up to tabletop. And then as we get to tabletop, let your hips go one back the other. Swing your legs around in front of you. And we're gonna come down to our back. Right. So get your toes to the top of the mat. Reach your arms forward, tuck your chin to your chest. Round out, let yourself lower all the way down. So you're coming down onto your back. Once you're all the way down on your back, take your hands to your sides, palms face down. Right, walk your heels a little closer to your glutes, close so you can get them. Press all four corners of both feet into the mat and lift your hips up here. Come in to 
to your bridge. If you have a block and you want to slide a block under your hips, take a supported bridge, you can do that. Right? You can tuck your shoulders at least slightly if they're staying unsupported or if you put that block under there for a supported bridge. If you're unsupported and you want to make it really deep, maybe you work one entire shoulder in the upper, underneath your body, up your hands underneath your body. That pushes your hips even higher. The higher we get the hips, right, the more we increase the flexibility of the back. We get the hips higher either by using the strength in our legs if we're unsupported, engaging the quads, engaging the glutes, using the strength in the legs to push the hips up, or with the leverage of that block, your hips are on a block, right? You put that block under there to force the hips up to increase the flexibility of the back. Take three more breaths here. And then on your next exhale, let your hips float down nice and slow. And just let those hips uh, settle onto the mat. You tuck your shoulders, work them out, right? If you still have that block under your hips, it's fine, you can leave it there. Or you can slide it out and have your hips fly on the ground. We're gonna go to waterfall. That's where we bring the feet straight up over the hips. You flex your feet like you're gonna step on a ceiling, on, the, on a ceiling, on the ceiling, right? The one's over you right now. You have your hands on the ground. You're gonna have your hands resting on your belly. If you got that block in your hips, it just makes it slightly more intense because we've elevated our hips slightly. If you want shoulder stand here, that's an option. You can lift your hips up on your own, put your hands the small of your back so that you're supporting yourself on your shoulders and your forearms. If you wanna to go to shoulder stand, go for it. You don't have to. If you're in shoulder stand, your feet become kind of half flexed, half pointed. If you're staying in waterfall, keep your feet fully flexed. Take a couple more breaths here. We're just getting the blood to go from the feet where it feels okay back to our head and our heart where we need it more. And we're ready to come out of it. We're all going to come out of this the same way. Whatever version you're in, bend your knees, let them scrape along your face and body. Slowly drop those feet back down to the mat. We're going to finish off with our happy baby and our twists. So in happy baby, we take the feet up again. If you still have a block under your hips, you want to remove it here so that your hips are flat on the ground. Then take your feet up to the sky again, maybe not necessarily right over your hips again, unless that feels good to you. And then you're going to take your feet and separate them. Maybe a whole lot, maybe a little bit. And that's up to you, whatever feels good. Bend your knees, maybe a lot, maybe a little bit. Up to you. Reach up for your same foot with your same hand. If you can't reach your foot, grab your ankle, your shin, your knee. Just make that connection somewhere. Once you've made it, roll forward. You want to feel that sacrum, the low part of your back. Press into that. Once you've got that going, you can rock from side to side. We're giving ourselves a spinal massage, and it should feel good. A couple more breaths here. Just making your happy baby feel really happy. And if you're still rocking, come to a stop. Now we're going to hug the knees all the way into the chest and do our final twist. It's like the twist we did at the beginning of class, only this time we get to hold it a little longer. Right? So you're taking your arms out long in the T position. Come straight out of your shoulder blades. And then as you exhale, let your knees fall to the right. Let your chin, let your gaze go to the left. Maybe you take that left hand, press the knees closer to the earth. Maybe extend your legs toward your right fingertips, maybe just stay where you are. Keep that left shoulder anchored as you continue the twist. Now bring your knees back up to center here. And then as you exhale, now you're gonna drop your knees to the left your chin and your gaze to the right. Maybe take your left hand and press the knees closer to the earth. Maybe you extend your legs toward your fingertips. Maybe you just stay where you are. Let's finish off this twist. Just feel like our practice that our bodies remember everything we did today. So next time we come practice yoga, it's all a little easier to go everywhere a little deeper. On your next inhale, bring your knees back to center. 
the final hug is your chest. Now let's set up for our final pose, our Shavasana. Let your legs extend long and take your hands to your sides. That's your traditional Shavasana, just flat on your back. If it's not comfortable to you, don't stay there. You have the option to bend your knees, you want to fall in against each other, or butterfly your legs. Roll to your side, roll to your belly, whatever feels good. Find somewhere to be where you're perfectly comfortable, where you're going to be able to stay perfectly still, and most importantly, where your mind is going to be able to go perfectly quiet. Let your breath guide you to that quiet of the mind. Okay? You don't have to control your breath here anymore. We've been doing it for an hour now. Let your breath go. Let it begin to guide you. Keep your full focus there so that your breath takes you right to a place where there's nothing left in your mind but you and your breath. That's going to be your true quiet of the mind. Slowly, start to come back into the room. Wiggle your fingers, your toes. Feel that increased sensation that comes with the quiet mind. If you want to here, take your arms overhead. Do a nice, full, deep body stretch. And then from there, just let yourself roll over onto your right side in a fetal position. Knees bent. Take a couple breaths there just to reacclimate. Get more space. Get the sights and the sound of them come back to you. Take as long as you need right here. But then when you're ready, only when you're ready, push yourself up seated. And we'll close here. So let's close with our two Mari breaths. No, no, no. In the Mari breath, we inhale, have the exhale, make that little humming sound in the back of the throat. The OM is the universal syllable, it uses all parts of the throat. You can join me in these breaths or you can just listen. Let's close our eyes here together. Let's close our eyes here though, and we'll inhale together. drift open. Bring your hands to heart center. Thank you, all of you, for sharing your energy, your practice with me this morning. The light in me honors the light in each of you. Namaste. 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 Thank you. All right. So I'll be back Wednesday night for some yin. Come join us tomorrow. Les will be here in the morning with Pio, and Heidi will be here tomorrow night for more gentle if you want more of that. I will see you all Wednesday. Bye.